Hi guys, this is Magnus Blomquist here from Radio Visca, and I just wanted to do a reply to a video I just watched from Ash Tuna um, on YouTube, uh, and his the title of his video is "Immigration is the Number One Problem." Um, and in this video, he likens Europe, and you know, I would, I would. And I think he actually does say North America as well, but he only speaks about Europe. Um, he likens the West essentially um, to a sinking boat with a leak with a hole in the bottom. And he you know, extends this analogy to kind of uh, present the boat as Europe. And then the people in the boat are, you know, the Europeans and the people on the outside of the boat are the people from the third world essentially. Uh, the ocean and that's rushing in it. You know, I mean, <laughs> I think social justice warriors could probably have a field day with this analogy, but I think it's pretty decent. Um, certainly numerically, when you look at the numbers in of people, it, it really is like, you know, a few people in a boat versus an ocean because you really only have, you know, I mean, most European countries only have you know, five to 10 million people. Uh, this is something that, uh, you know, uh, people like to forget, but uh, I mean, uh, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Belgium, Holland, Austria, Switzerland, uh, and then of course Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, um, uh, San Marino, <laughs> Croatia, Slovenia. Um, they, I mean, even the Czech Republic. I mean, they're all around around ten or less a million people. So really just your average city in China or India, you know? <laughs> um, so, you know, just a fraction of the population of India could completely swamp uh, Norway, for example. Uh, a fraction of the Chinese population could completely swamp Holland, you know? So it really is kind of like a, a, a an ocean flooding in and, um, uh, especially the population growth as well in Africa. Um, I think Nigeria is amongst the the most uh, rapidly growing countries in the world, and in general, um, Africa is like this. You know, it, it doesn't bode well for Europeans or Europe as as a sort of ethnically European place. Any of the countries really. So I think he's right um, with that analogy, but I would extend it. I, I think he hasn't really comprehended the full picture because really what we have is a boat, not just with one leak, but with dozens of leaks. And more importantly, a significant and ever-growing percentage of the population is constantly smashing new holes in the boat. So... You know, it's not just one leak, um, it's uh, dozens. And, um, you know, you, 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 and with leak, I, I kind of would like to extend this analogy of leak to, you know, maybe maybe the, the reasons, not just the, the ports or the ships in the Mediterranean, but the, you know, really what the, the leak is, is the reason that you have this immigration. So to identify some of the causes, I think, is the first step in plugging the leak. So I've, I've made a bit of a list here and um, I just want to kind of go, go through it because I think, you know, Ash kind of came up with three ways of dealing with things. But, but as the uh, old European proverb says, you know, sharpen your axe for four days and then cut the tree down on the fifth day. So think about what you do first. Uh, I... You know, of course, by all means, if you see a, a, a leak, you know, plug it with whatever you have at hand. But there is the thinking aspect that I think is important. So if you want to identify the causes of immigration at the moment in Europe, I mean, there's just so many, right? Uh, I mean, the obvious ones are the wars in Syria, Yemen, Libya, Afghanistan, and various African countries as well. Um, you know, Sudan, Somalia, and even in, in West Africa. So obviously war creates displacement, war creates upheaval, people are scared of being shot, uh, food supplies run low, war does create refugees. 
Um, now, what, what percentage of the people fleeing are directly affected by war? Probably not a huge amount, but there's the spillover effects of war. You know, for example, in Afghanistan, I mean, a lot of the Central Asians, or the, the Afghans coming from Afghanistan, that you know, they may actually not be directly affected by combat or even food shortages, but they really don't have a future in a country that's been at war for almost 20 years now. Well, it's actually been at war for 60 years, but um, you know, that's another story. Uh, 50 at least. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's these other reasons that other other spillover effects of war that create refugees, right? So if you want to stop that leak, if you want to plug that leak, metaphorically speaking, well, those wars need to end. Um, now, I think it's probably worth another video to go into the reasons for the wars, but, you know, that's just that. Leave it at that. Then we have another reason, which is, is more of a pull factor. It's the integration and welfare policies in Europe. I mean, in, in short, if there's no welfare, if there's no support, uh, that's going to spread in the age of globalization. I mean, all these migrants have phones, you know, they're going to text their friends back home on WhatsApp. Hey, man, it fucking sucks here. Um, and, and by the way, that is actually happening to some degree already. Um, you do have Africans like telling people back in Africa, hey, don't, don't bother coming, man. I've got this massive debt to a people smuggler now and it, it sucks here and I can't get a job and I can't get women and I'm just in this camp. So there, there is actually one of the, the, one of the groups plugging the leak, so to speak, is some of the disaffected new arrivals. Um, then uh, another thing that is obviously uh, on the pull side is the, the sort of refugee welcome organizations um, and, and these NGOs. So I think the refugee welcome, the migrant welcome phenomena has both an organized and a disorganized aspect to it. I don't know to what degree um, all these, you know, girls with the refugee welcome signs showing up at the train stations, to what degree that was organized and just sort of propaganda. I, I would say s a significant amount of it is. So really you've got to then investigate the organizations behind that. But there's certainly also what, you know, we would do, uh, what we would term libtards, actually just doing it voluntarily, speaking out like that uh, in the media and, you know, uh, showing up at demonstrations and so on. So that's a mindset amongst certain European peoples. That, that's another cause, another leak, so to speak. Uh, leak number four, the politicians and the elite driving it. So, I mean, this is again a huge topic, uh, probably worth another video, but you need to identify it, identify the people and um, yeah, and, and their reasoning uh, why they're doing it. Uh, leak number five, um, the living standards in Europe, you know, this is a no brainer, the living standards in Europe and in North America versus the living standards in the countries of origin, the Middle East, um, Africa, Central Asia. I mean, this is just obvious, right? I mean, the media from the West is spread all over the planet, the news, you know, you can go on a Google Street View, you can just watch any old TV show and, and these migrants do and they're like, hey, I want that, you know, so that's a no brainer. There are then also the people smugglers and propagandists in the actual areas of origin. So there have been uh, pamphleteers and, and propagandists identified, and it's probably worth another video, but there are actually people going around promising the migrants, you know, hey, you're going to get a Swedish girlfriend, you're going to get a house, you're going to get a free this, free that. It's the land of milk and honey. Um, and not enough research has been done on that, uh, except, uh, you know, the odd, you know, documentary on finding these leaflets and, 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 you know, nobody's really investigated who's printing them and where, where this is coming from. Is it people smugglers? Is it some intelligence agency? You know, what's going on here? But there's, there's certainly a sort of nefarious um, sort of organized effort in the countries of origin as well. Um, leak number seven, pornography. And I think this one's totally underestimated. I mean, the majority of pornography on the internet, which is 
globally available to people on their smartphone now in every country. People almost everywhere have a smartphone nowadays. Um, as you always see in all the, you know, the, the video news footage of migrants, they're all on their phones. Well, the pornography features predominantly white women. And, uh, you know, it's not like there's no women back home. So, so why are all these men leaving their women in their, in their home countries behind and going to Europe? Well, I think there's a sexual component to that. Um, pornography does, uh, you know, shape your desires. It, it, it messes with your brain, essentially, which is why I'm, you know, against watching it. Uh, all of you should stop it immediately. Uh, but if we look at the um, uh, some of the genres as well, I mean, there's this overwhelming, um, uh, what I would call interracial kind of, you know, sort of component to it these days. And they're basically, I think this uh, meme is crafted by those who create pornography that, you know, Africans just need to come to Europe and the white women are just waiting for them you know they just want the african dick you know so um and there's an interesting aspect to the desirability of females in various cultures um i think okay cupid the dating site had a very interesting research on this in the past where they they looked at how many responses and how many uh messages people of different ethnicity got and black women got the least, uh, even by black men. And white women got the most, even by, you know, men of any other ethnicity, um, it, barring Asians. I think with Asians, the Asians tend to prefer Asian women, but almost all, uh, and I'm talking about East Asians, as in Japanese, Chinese, Koreans. Um, uh, but any other ethnicity, the, the preference was clearly for white women in based on the number of messages sent. So, uh, and interestingly, white women were not overwhelmingly interested in African men and rejected the, these messages. So, you know, the, the pornography angle is just wrong. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, if, I, if I have time, I'll, I'll post a link to this. So this is leak number, where are we at? Seven, right. And leak number eight, um, the jihadi ideology and the organized... Uh, you know, stealth jihad by demographics, which has been, I mean, there's plenty of videos out there by Muslim preachers um, preaching this, you know, the, there's this sort of, um, um, you know, the, 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 there's these videos of preachers saying, oh, the, the, the strongest weapon of uh, Islam is the Muslim women's womb, you know. So they're basically saying that demographics is the way to win. Um, and and there's, I think there's significant Saudi money behind this. Um, and the Saudis are keep building mosques all over Europe, right? So I think there's an actual organized uh, infiltration event as well, you know, uh, aspect to it. Um, and this may not just be the um, Saudis. It may not, not just be Islam per se. It, it could be that there's Chinese money behind this, Indian money. I mean... If you're weaker militarily, well, you know, you use hybrid warfare. Um, so there's other ways to defeat your enemy other than nuclear weapons or fighter jets. Um, so I think there's a sort of warfare aspect to it as well. That's another one of the leaks. Um, then uh, leak number nine is uh, Jewish organizations, rabbis, um, people that, you know, want to stop the banning of halal and kosher slaughter, people that want to stop the bans on circumcision, uh, people that want to, um, you know, diversify uh, European societies because it's in their interest. So these are sort of long-standing, um, you know, goals of, 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 the Jewish minority that they admit themselves. I mean, there's always thousands of rabbis signing all these welcome, welcome, welcome uh, refugee, you know, declarations. And then there's interviews by you know, the, the lead rabbi of um, Europe on how the Muslims are their allies against the sort of atheistic anti-religious freedom, uh, you know, because circumcision is religious freedom. Uh, Western, you know, I mean, there's enough been said about that. I think this is obvious. Um, then uh, leak number 10, are the migrants already in Europe? So, uh, you know, I said earlier that there's the new arrivals that might be 
putting a bit of a dampener on it. But, you know, not all new arrivals are going to be like this. Um, some have a home, some have welfare, um, some have established themselves. And I, I think we're talking here primarily about, you know, some of the older communities. So, you know, Turks in Germany or Pakistanis, Bangladeshis in England, uh, Algerians in France. And they're obviously going to be pro-migration because they want to not be in the minority anymore. I mean, this is uh, blatantly obvious. And they want their family, their extended family, their friends to come. They want to be in the majority. So they're pro into uh, immigration. Um, then leak number 11 <laughs> is uh, the socialists uh, who are importing votes. Um, so there's, there's been plenty of research about how essentially conservative voters are overwhelmingly native Europeans, ethnically European, both in America and in um, in Europe. In Europe, a bit less so. But uh, if you look at, for example, who the Turks vote for in Germany, it's it's not the CDU or the CSU. It's you know the uh, what are the parties there? SPD and the Greens and the PDS and and the sort of the leftist parties, right? And and they've actually, I think there's actually Turkish candidates in a lot of those parties as well now. So. It's, it's obvious that those parties want more of their voters, right? So, you know, um, not just one leak, uh, a, a whole, uh, you know, it's, it's like a machine gun is hammering this boat, right? It's like you've got uh, torpedoes hitting it. Um, and the first step in plugging it is to really clearly identify these leaks. And I think I've given you guys some ideas here. So maybe you can, and I've given you, Ash, some, some topics maybe you can investigate. It's really to look into each one of these causes, um, investigate exactly how it's happening, who's behind it, why it's happening, and then think up a strategy to change it. You know, um, I, I, you know, I, it's still early days, really, in the response. If you really think about it, um, you know, Brexit is not really a response to to, to this immigration. It, it, it was sort of you know, about EU and so on. I mean, there's still non-EU immigration happening to England and the UK in, in unprecedented numbers. So um, I don't know if there's any content out there that has sort of analyzed this in this form, but um, if there is, uh, you know, link below. And I think this should get the conversation started. Thanks for listening. Bye.